Hi, and welcome to O2 Life. My name is Evan Soroka, and this O2 stretch practice is for you if you're feeling lazy and you don't have a lot of time to get your yoga in. And it's also a great preparatory practice for meditation. This is, bottom line, one of my favorite practices. I'm not reinventing the wheel here. This comes directly from Hatha Yoga. And um, I had a teacher in Argentina who used to start every practice this way, and it is one of my go-tos, so I can't wait to share it with you. For this practice, you are gonna actually need a few things. You're gonna need a wall. So that's number one. Number two is a block and a strap. If you do not have a block or a strap, that's fine. What you can do is use a rolled up mat in lieu of the block and use like a hand towel in lieu of the strap and you'll get the same benefit from it. So to begin, we're gonna start lying on the back and bring your feet into the wall. So just take a moment to get there. <laughs> what I find is I actually have to bend the knees a little bit to scooch in and then go ahead and bend your knees a little bit, scooch in a little bit more. And then when you straighten your legs, it's gonna put your pelvis into more of a neutral position. So it kind of slides the flesh out of the way and lengthens the low back. Bring your feet together as well. So the inner thighs are together. And now you're basically in Tadasana on your back. Close your eyes. Progressively deepen and lengthen your breath. Check in and observe the present moment. Observe the body, observe your mind, observe without judgment. And set the intention that this may be a beneficial practice, not only for you, but for everyone whose life that you touch today. All right, when you're ready, we'll begin. So we'll be repeating a lot of these postures in two different versions, one without and also with the block, and we'll be holding each posture for approximately one minute. I'll do my best to time it as we go. So the first posture is Ardha Apanasana. So we'll begin by bending the right knee into the body. Mm -hmm. And you can just interlace your fingers over the shin. So in this position, your right knee is, or your right leg is in flexion, or the left leg is in an extension. So I want you to bring attention to your left leg and the best of you can is to press your left foot into the wall and work on straightening your left leg. As you do this, drop your right hip down. There's kind of this tendency to pull it up and pull the leg more into the body rather than outside of the body. Good. And just maintain your breath. For many of us, especially in mountain communities where we are in Aspen, is our hip flexors are tighter, and so it might be more challenging for you to, in fact, straighten this left leg, and that might be your work today, and that's good work. Breath is really smooth, constant throughout this practice. All right, now we're gonna switch the legs. So you'll straighten your right leg forward to the wall and we'll bring the left leg in. Interlace the hands over the shin. Bring attention to the right foot pressing into the wall and you're gonna push more into the inner foot and spiral the inner right thigh down. As you're straightening the leg, it's called terminal knee extension. You're trying to straighten and press the knee towards the ground. Trust me, you're not gonna be able to hyperextend here on your back, so not, uh, you don't need to worry about that. It's really about focusing on this lengthening of the leg. And as you do this as well, you're drawing your left leg in and dropping the hip down and away from the shoulder and maintaining your breath. If you're feeling any um, like cramping in the front of your left hip, back out of it a little bit, and that can be an indication of something going on here, especially in the front of your hip joint. 
All right, good. So go ahead and relax, straighten the left leg forward. Come back to this supine Tadasana, also known as Shavasana. It rhymes. <laughs> and now we're going to take half happy baby's pose with the right foot. So you'll bring the right leg in, and you're going to grab for the inside, actually, of the foot. Yeah. And for some of us, myself included, a strap is actually better. And let's just show them with the strap here, and you can grab from the inside. Good. So bring your attention once again to the straightened leg. You're going to push the heel into the ground. And with the right leg that's in this half happy baby's pose, your goal is to stack the heel over the knee. So for some of us, it's actually straighten the knee a little bit more. Now slide your right sacrum down and away from the hips. So actually requires quite a bit of strength and activation of the quadratus lumborum. And you'll feel like you're pulling your right hip slash sacrum towards your left heel. Good. And again, working on the straightening of the leg here. It's very challenging. All right, good. Let's switch the legs. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Half happy baby's pose. With or without the strap, if you're not using the strap, just grab for the inside today. Good. Press the right foot into the wall, inner wall, inner thigh. And then slide the left hip down and away from this, um, the sacrum as, as if you're trying to pull your left hip down towards your right heel. The heel <laughs> stacks over the knee. And sometimes it's actually easier to pull the leg out. And I'm going to encourage you, if you're one of those really flexible people, to almost like back out of it. And imagine like you're trying to press the heel towards the ceiling. That's kind of interesting how backing out of our mobility actually creates a deeper stretch. Good. All right, from there, release. Left leg forward. Hmm. And now we're going to work with um, Supta Padangustasana 1. And this is just a standard leg stretch. So you'll bring the right leg into the body, loop your strap around the sole of the foot. And you can go a little bit longer with the strap so you can have one end of the strap in each hand. Yeah. I like to wrap my hands a couple times and use my thumbs as stoppers, but just be cognizant that you're not gripping uh, your hands. We don't want to create more tension, especially if you have arthritis. So now bring attention once again to your left leg. Push the left heel into the, the wall. Slide your right hip down like you're drawing the right sacrum towards the left heel. Shoulders are relatively relaxed. And our goal is actually to stack the heel more over the hip. So I'm going to back her out of this just a little bit. And she's going to focus on really terminally extending the knee, squeezing the quadricep of both legs. Now imagine as if you're walking. And the pattern is to push your top heel up and push the bottom heel up, even though it's in the wall. Push it up, and you'll start to feel some activation here as well and some interesting areas of the legs. Good. All the while, although we're not cueing the breath, your focus, focus is on a balanced inhale and exhale. Really great. And then we'll switch the legs. Slide in just a little bit more for me, Alexa. And you might find that your body begins to creep away from the wall. So if that's happening for you, it's normal. You just reset, come back in. So you can really create that wall access, which is a big part of the benefit of this practice. I always tell my students that the wall doesn't lie, meaning if you're using the wall, you don't have an opportunity to cheat in the poses. And it's not that we want to cheat, but our body always looks for the pass path of least resistance. So you're pressing the heel into the wall, pushing your top heel up, and it's as if you're also drawing your left thigh bone into the hip socket. So it's a 
deep stabilizing effect. The inner right thigh spirals down as you press both heels away from you. Really deep hamstring stretch here. Wonderful. And slowly release. And bring the legs back to center. So reset if you need again. Next is Supta Padangushasana 2. It's our open leg variation. So you'll come back to the variation you just did with the leg straight above you with the right leg. We'll start there. Great. So get the alignment of what you just found. And you're actually going to grab hold of the straps with just your right hand. And uh, I'm going to recommend you go up a little bit higher than where you were previous with the hand. Exactly. Um, you can wrap the hand a couple times around the strap if you like. You just want to have some stability. Now, it's great that you've got this view because you can see here, we're going to externally rotate the thigh. So exactly. And we're going to open the leg only as far as you can maintain your left hip down. So Alexa's even going to bend her right elbow here and rest the elbow on the ground. That's it. And you'll press the left heel into the wall. So I want you to imagine, actually go a little bit tighter for me, Alexa. I'm going to hold your foot. She needs just a little less slack here. She'll have more control. Yeah, that's it. Squeeze the left side of your abdomen. Turn the navel to the left. Good. And you're going to draw your right hip down towards the left heel. It's as, as if you're trying to drop your sacrum, the right sacrum, towards the left heel. And you're pulling everything in. I have my hand here, but you could even have your foot in a wall. And as you do this, push both of your heels up as if you're trying to slide um, the film of the wall up towards the ceiling, almost like to peel the paint off of the wall. And you'll start to notice the insides of your legs, hopefully, here. I'm going to walk away. I want you to try to maintain. Good. Wonderful. And then we'll come out of the pose and switch the legs. Supta Padangushtasana 2. Good. So you'll start in the first position, making sure that you have the alignment. And now before you go open, externally rotate by pivoting exactly and maintaining a connection through your right hip and leg open the left leg sometimes it likes to hike up and so if that's you you could modify this by bending your knee yeah uh-huh so a little bit more here through the quad press down into the foot And then push your feet up as if you're trying to slide the paint off of the wall and up towards the ceiling. Keep pressing into the inner right foot. Push the left heel up against the wall. You can slide it up against me. Turn your navel to the right. Mm hmm Oh, yeah. That's it. Keep straightening the leg for me. Good. All right. We'll come back through to center. Mm -hmm. Good job. And release. Mm. And just link with the effect of what you've done thus far. All right, now we're going to transition to do the same sequence, but with a block under the sacrum. So in order to do this, I'm going to recommend you bend your knees. You'll scoot your body in just a little bit closer to the wall. And then you're going to place the block at its lowest setting underneath your sacrum 
we don't want the highest setting and you'll you'll soon see why so this is where it gets a little bit individualistic in terms of the distance from the wall so you might need a measure go ahead try to straighten your legs and yeah see if you can so for her she needs to kind of scoot back a little bit actually yeah now um bend re -bend your knees for me exactly and i want you to slide the block just a a little bit further back. There is a tendency to get really shrunken in the torso here, so you might also need to scooch your shoulders and your torso back so that the low back lengthens. Now from here, go ahead and draw your right knee into the body. Good. And press the left foot into the wall. Now instead of pulling the leg in this time, we're going to push the hands into the thigh. Uh-huh and you can straighten your arms and there's just a little bit of an isometric resistance here. So you're pushing the hands into the thigh while also simultaneously extending your left knee and pressing the left heel into the wall. And this great opening for the front of the hip. As so we're putting the leg into more of an extension as if you were in a lunge position and it's going to help to stretch the front of the hip flexors as well as the quadriceps, these areas that generally tend to be overworked and dominant, especially in an active community. If you notice that the right hip is hiking up, again, draw it down, but continue that pressure of thigh into hand. So we're stabilizing through the right leg. Good, all right, let's switch. So let's um, bring the left knee in and straighten the right leg forward. Good. And press the hands into the thigh. Scoot in a little bit more for me, Alexis. So you get that heel. Yeah. No one can get away with anything in here. <laughs> Got a watchful eye. Press the right heel into the wall, inner right foot, hands into thigh, creating quite a bit of stability as well as mobility through the front of the right thigh and quadricep and hip flexor. Just maintain your breath. Another really cool thing uh, about this posture with a block under you is it promotes a slight inversion quality of Viparita Karani. It has a very calming effect. It induces parasympathetic activation. So now I'd like you to bend both of your knees, place your feet on the ground. And now we're going to bring the right leg in first into half happy baby's pose. And even if you could do it without the strap on the last side, I bet you you're going to probably need a strap now that you've got the block under you. Um, okay. And then you'll straighten your left leg forward into the wall. Yeah. Good. So back out of it if you're really flexible. And you're stacking the heel over the knee, pushing the left heel into the wall and up. Good. The low back lengthens. The shoulder blades retract slightly. The jaw is relaxed. Even the tongue relaxed. And as you pull in, also squeeze the leg into the arm so there's this drawing in action we refer, refer to in yoga tradition as samana vayu it's a movement of your energy inwardly promotes stability assimilation integration press there you go and then slide the right heel or excuse me the right hip towards the left heel Make sure you're not hiking the hip up. Yeah, so keep straightening the knee. Yes, great. Switch the legs. Mm hmm Half happy baby's pose. What a great opportunity this is to study the difference between sides of your body. 
Press the right foot into the wall. Lengthen the low back. Stack the left heel over the left knee. And slide the left hip down towards the right hip. That's it. I like to imagine that it's actually my sacrum more than the hip, that I'm bringing my left sacrum down, more the SI joint to be more exact, the left SI joint towards the right heel, and you're even pushing your right heel up towards the ceiling. Good. Relax the hands, relax the jaw. Effortless effort. And then slowly release. Let's keep the feet on the ground first while you switch the legs. So now the Supta Padangustasana, one variation with the leg straight above you. the heel over the hip, even open your toes. There's a fine line between how much flexion you put in your ankle versus that and it actually compressing your ankle. So you wanna have a little bit of flexion like this, it's great, and then the toes. Otherwise the arch, this medial arch begins to take the brunt of the movement. We wanna avoid that. Press your left heel into the wall and draw everything into center. The right sacrum slides down towards the left heel. A little bit of an inversion quality, promoting that parasympathetic activation allows us to really rest, to rebuild, and in the long term promotes more vitality. Switch the legs when you're ready. That's it. Good, situating yourself Make sure you're pressing your heel into the wall. I know it wants to slip away, so pay attention to that. You'll get the most out of it the closer you stay to the wall. Heel towards the ceiling, shoulders relaxed. Breathe into the front of your right hip. Drop your left sacrum towards the right heel and even press the heels up towards the ceiling. Both heels, even though it's pushing into the wall, it's this Activation up. So good. Great awareness. All right, and then release. Bend your knees and place your feet on the ground while we switch sides. Supta Padangushtasana 2. It's a little tricky with the block, so it requires quite a bit of stability. So we'll come back to one, but with the strap in just your right hand. Pull the hip down away from the shoulder and then turn the thigh bone. It's not just your foot, it's the thigh bone that's turning out. Yeah, I'm gonna have you walk your hand up a little higher. And then you'll release your left hand out to the side. If you have something to hold on to, that's great too. <laughs> I'm gonna hold Alexa here and just give her a little bit of weight. You can also grab your mat with your hand and you're just gonna open, but you're not gonna be able to go nearly as far and that's okay. So you're gonna back off and 
Think about this as a stabilizer for you. So press your left heel into the wall. Imagine like you're pressing both of your heels up towards the ceiling, sliding the paint off of the wall. Good. Core is active. The navel turns to the left. A little bit of rotation here, creating more of a neutral orientation. I'm going to turn her out a little bit more and continue pressing as the front of the left thigh opens. That's it. And in fact, this is more than just a lazy practice. I mentioned this is preparation for meditation. So it's really balancing for the nervous system, which is why it's so preparatory for meditation. But also the, the work that we're doing for the legs is going to help you sit more comfortably. All right, that's enough. Come back. And then switch the legs. Starting in the first stretch, Supta Pangushtasana 1 with the hand, just the left hand grabbing the strap. Once you feel stable and you're like equal on the block, turn the thigh bone out. If notice this foot turns out as well. And then you're going to open the leg just as far as you can without popping your right hip up. If you've got a loved one at home, or even another wall. You can practice this at a corner where <laughs> the right foot's pressing into one wall and this left foot was going to press onto the other wall. Now lengthen the low back a little bit. Press your right heel into the wall. Push both heels up. Yeah, let's do that same activation here. Turn the navel to the right. Yes. And then feel you're going to feel quite a bit of inner thighs, hopefully, here. And if you're not, that's okay. Take some time. Push up against me, like towards the ceiling. Yes. All right, and then come back to center. Ooh, good job. Release the strap. We're going to roll over to the side, come off the block for a moment. And we're going to transition actually um, to legs up the wall. So in order to do this, you roll to the side and you can place your block. Actually, we're going to do it with the block. And we're going to do it the lower setting. You're welcome to go a little bit higher. Just to, I've got about maybe this distance from the wall and the block, so you've got some room for your tush. And you'll sit up, and it always is a little bit. It looks easier than it is. So take a moment. Pause the video if you need. And you're going to do legs up the wall. Yeah, and if you need, you can lift up and resituate yourself. Good. You can take your arms wide. You can do goalpost, or you can keep them by your sides. Sometimes it's nice to even cover the eyes with a strap. Can I cover the eyes for you? Okay, find your ujjayi breath. And please inhale all the way down to your abdomen, even the base of the spine. Hold your inhale for a moment, retaining the breath. And now exhale slowly and just sense the breath moving up towards the crown of the head and even surpassing the crown of the head and moving out. Inhale from the belly. Hold your inhale, retain your breath at the belly. Exhale even slower. Exhale from your belly. Feel the breath rising up and moving up and out even through the crown of the head. Inhale, belly. Try to count to four this time. Hold your breath for the count of four. 
And now exhale for the count of eight as the breath rises, sense this cooling energy moving up and out through the crown of the head. Inhale, four. Building the inhale, the warmth of your abdomen. Hold your breath for four counts. Exhale, eight counts. Watch your exhale rise, move up and out through the crown of your head. Continue just a few more rounds like that. Inhale, four. Pause, four. Exhale, eight. Inhale, four. Abdomen softens. Pause, four. Exhale, eight. Now, please relax all conscious shaping of your breath. Let your breath become its most natural, rhythmic pace. Completely effortless. Body at rest. The mind at rest. And you aware. Aware of all your awareness. Now feel free to stay here. Even go into a shavasana for about five minutes where you would straighten your legs and lie flat on your back. Or transition from here onto your side. You can bend your knees and sit up and work your way into a meditation practice. Thank you so much for your presence. The practice is complete. Namaste.